Well, good morning, everybody. Can we give our Lord and Savior a hand clap of praise today? Hallelujah. That was, that was good. Wait, I want to take a moment because I want to thank God so much for our choir. Didn't they sound beautiful today? Bless y'all. Amen. Amen. God is such a good God. Listen, I'm so excited to see you in the house of the Lord on today. Listen, before we get into communion today, um, well, for, first of all, if you did not receive a communion element, I want you to lift your hands high so that the deacons and the ambassadors can serve you. We want everyone to partake this morning with us. Hallelujah. Lift them high so that they can serve you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a few back on the right over there. We want everyone to participate with us on today. Hallelujah. God has been good to us all. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, before we get into that, um, I want to take a moment, first of all, I want to thank Pastor, Pastor Mike Liggins for speaking for me on last week. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for speaking for me on last week. He did an amazing, amazing job. My wife and I were we're speaking at a friend's church down outside of Memphis, Tennessee, in my hometown of Brownsville. So uh, it was a blessing to be there. Uh, also, while I'm speaking of that, I want to remind you all that Master Life class is going to start in June. And I'm highly recommending, highly recommending that you sign up for our Master Life class. There's a lot of, 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 of different teaching opportunities and, and learning opportunities that we're going to present to you uh, within the coming months. Uh, Pastor Liggins and I were talking about this today because we're trying to create transformational leaders. We're not just trying to create churchgoers. And so we're going to be doing things a little differently on Tuesday nights instead of TNT. We're going to do some things differently. So Pastor Liggins is going to be teaching the Master Life class, and some of the other pastors are going to be teaching as well. So I, I want you to sign up. It's critical that you sign up for these classes so that we can get deep into the Word of God, so you can have your tools that you will need when the enemy comes in like a flood. You will have a word to use against that enemy. Amen? And so I thank you for that. I also want to take a moment and thank all of our members. You know, you know, this is Teachers Appreciation Month. And so a few weeks ago, a lot of our members, they partnered with uh, my assistant, Rebecca Wright, and um, they put all of these bags together. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. We got uh, hundreds of bags that we're passing out to teachers in all six schools that we represent. Come on, let's give our members a hand for that. So we have... We have six schools that we represent, six schools, six schools. That's a lot of teachers. Yeah. Amen. That's a lot of teachers. And so, um, but we are doing our part to show them how much we love them and how much we appreciate them. Can we take a moment, because I don't think we, I don't think we represented them properly when they came up on the announcement. Can we take a moment and thank God for our teachers today? Thank God for our teachers. I know each one of us, we, we, we have at least one teacher we can think of right now, right now, right now that will come to mind. One teacher, at least one, that if it wasn't for her, yeah, or him, one, one, one teacher that blessed your life. Yeah, for me it was Ms. Armstead, Ms. Armstead. Help me get out of the third grade. Thank you, Ms. Armstead. Bless you. <laughs> Amen. And so we thank God. We thank God for our teachers. Listen, if you have your communion elements, everybody's been served. Let's bless them. Let's pray over them right now. Father God, we thank you right now for our communion elements. We thank you for those that are joining us online. We bless now the communion that they have. We ask that you would transform it now, that it may be used for your spiritual use on this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
On that day that we know as the Last Supper, Jesus sat with his disciples and he took bread. After he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it, said, take, eat. This is my body that shall be broken for you. And they took and they ate together. Like manner, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents the new covenant of my blood that shall be shed for you. As often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show remembrance of me until I come again. And they took and they drank together. Bow your heads right where you are and pray with me right here. Father God, we come before you today. And before we ask you for anything, we want to thank you for all that you've already done. We thank you, Lord God, for last night laying down and for touching us, that we got up this morning clothed in our right mind. Each one of us this morning, Father, got our own testimony how good you've been to us. And so we come to you this morning, Father, and we say thank you for all of the blessings that you bestowed upon us. Thank you for protecting our children and for protecting our homes, for protecting us on the dangerous highways, Father God. We thank you today, Father, because we saw accidents this week, but Lord, you didn't let it come near us. We thank you, Father, for all of the things that we saw on the news, but you protected our home. And for that, Father, we come together collectively today and we say thank you. And Father, we're not just praying for ourselves today, but Father, this morning we pray for the person on our left and our right. We don't know what's going on in their home. We don't know what they stand in need of. But your word says, while two or three are touching and agreeing, there you will be in the midst. I'm asking you to bless my neighbor right now in the name of Jesus. Bless everything that pertains to them. Bless their home, bless their children, bless their health, bless their finances. Bless their job, bless their mind, bless my neighbor in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we ask that you would have your way in this service. We turn this service over to you. Move any way you want to move in this place. Bless any way you want to bless in this house. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. And all the saints of God said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap for praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. The blood never loses its power. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm, I, I know that we are, we are a 21st century church, but I like it's something about those old school hymns that, that I can't get away from. It's something about uh, the blood that never loses its power. It's something about Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. <laughs> I wish I had some old school saints in here today. Yeah. There's something about there's a storm out over the ocean and it's headed this way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I, like, I like Kirk Franklin, but, but, but it's something about the old school hymns that just hit that just hit a little different. Amen? Amen? Listen, there is a word from the Lord. I'm not going to hold you long today. There is a word from the Lord that comes to us from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 65, beginning at verse 17. And we're going to read a little bit today because I want to set the context for uh, the word that God has given me to provide to you today. Isaiah 65, beginning at verse 17. Isaiah 65. Beginning at verse 17, we welcome those that are watching in our cyber sanctuary. God bless you. We thank God for you and for your faithfulness and for your contributions. And we, 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 we want to thank God for you. And we decree and declare that the same move of God that's in this house is going to take place in your house as you worship him there. Isaiah 65, beginning at verse 17. If you have it, signify by saying, I got it. Word of the Lord reads, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem 
and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die 100 years old, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be accursed. Here it is. I want you to catch this. This is God's word for you. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enough the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain nor bring forth children for trouble. For they, somebody say, he's talking about me. For they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Somebody ought to shout amen. I've come this morning to bring you the conclusion of a series that we started a few weeks ago titled Kingdom Living. Today's subtitle is Better Days Are Coming. I want you to help me right here. I want you to look at the person on your left or right and say, neighbor, I want you to know Better days are coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But better days, better days are coming. If they're bad, they're going to get good. If they're good, they're going to get great. If they're great, they're going to become phenomenal because better days are coming. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this word. Let your word speak to your people today. Father, speak to us from the volume of the book. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would use me now to declare this word to these your people. I can do nothing without you. But with you, Holy Spirit, I can do all things. Use my mouth and my tongue to declare your words with power, with boldness, and with might. And let your word go forward, Father God. Let it not just be a word that's heard. Let it be a word that is received that it may change the lives of your people. I decree and declare that it will. It's in the unmatched name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we seal this now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may take your seats. Somebody shout kingdom living. Amen. Yes, yes, kingdom living. That's what God desires for us. The Bible says in Proverbs 25 and 2, I need you to write that down. Proverbs 25 and 2, it says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. That's good, family, because the principle of kingdom living, I need you to hear me, can't just be desired. It must be discovered. Let me say that again. The principle of kingdom living cannot just be something that you desire, but it must be discovered. Jesus teaches this principle in Matthew chapter 6, round verse 33, when he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I want you to walk with me right here because in this text, he's giving us the order for things. Somebody say order. There is an order. God does everything in order. There is an order for how he wants kingdom living to be walked out. And this is what he says. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then these things. I need you to write this down. Never seek things. 
He did not say seek things. He did not say seek stuff. If you want to experience kingdom living, he, he's giving us the formula right here. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then the things will be added to you. It don't mean you don't have to work. It doesn't mean, come here, let, let, let me talk to you. It don't mean it's just going to drop out of heaven in your lap. That's not what he's saying. What it means is you're not going to have to fight for it. You're not going to have to lie, steal, cheat. You're not going to have to kiss up. You're not going to have to suck up. You're not going to have to lower your standards. All you have to do is seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the Bible said, this is Jesus talking. He said, if you do that, then all of these things will be added. Will be added to you. But he said, there's an order for things. And the order is, here it is, the first thing you must do is you must seek. Somebody say seek. Seek. The word seek means to pursue. It means to study. It means to explore, desire to know, learn. It means to be be preoccupied with. So walk with me right here. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. He's saying pursue the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He means study the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, desire to know the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Here it is, be preoccupied with the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. But he said, you must do it first. Somebody say first. First means priority. It means before all others. It means most important, highest value, above everything. Come here, let me talk to you. Because most of the time, people try to pursue things before they pursue the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If you pursue things, you might get it, but you're going to have to fight for it. And if you got to fight to get it, you're going to have to fight to keep it. I don't know about you, but I don't want a house I got to fight to keep. I don't want a car I got to fight to keep. I don't want a relationship I got to fight to keep. If I got, come here, let me talk to you. If I got to fight to get you and then fight to keep you, come here, you must not be for me. Come here, let me talk to you. Now, if you belong to me and you are with me, I'm going to fight for you, but I'm not going to be fighting on the front end. Come here. Oh, it's hot in here now. Yeah, it got hot. Yeah, it's hot. Come here. Come here. We got to talk about this thing because some of you, some of you tired because you sought the thing first before you sought the kingdom and God's righteousness. So you ended up with some stuff that you having to fight to keep because God didn't give it to you. Come here. Come here. So let's have a recap. I'm not going to be long. Here, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, see, 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 see. Watch, watch, watch this. I need you to write this down. If you didn't get it last week, I need you to get this. These are the steps that you must take to get to kingdom living. It's not going to just happen because you want it. There are some things that you must do if you're going to walk in kingdom living. The first thing you must get, if you didn't get it last week, here it is to recap. The first step is you must know your role. The first step is knowing your role. Value is connected to knowing your role. If you don't know your role, you would walk around this world thinking you don't have value. Value is connected to knowing your role. Everyone that God placed in the body is important to the body. I need you to understand that you are not a mistake, that you are important. You are important to the body. Somebody say, I'm important to God. You're important to the body. Not better than, but different from. 
God needs you in the body. You were born for a purpose. God created you with a purpose in mind. And the enemy is trying to distract people with an insatiable desire to discover where they were born, how they were born, and to whom they were born. They're making a whole lot of money trying to get people to discover where they were born, how they were born, and to whom they were born with no emphasis on why they were born. There is absolutely nothing you can do about where you were born, how you were born, and to whom you were born, but I need you to understand that you are in full control of why you were born. So the first thing you must understand is you must know your role. Say it with me. Say, know your role. Here it is. The second thing. I'm going to go quickly. Watch this. I need you to write this down. The second step, the kingdom living. Here it is. It, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's do what the king said. Do what the king said. It will save you a lot of time, a lot of trouble, a lot of tears, a lot of money. If you just do what the king said. If you look back over your life at the things that cause you the most pain, I bet you it is because you did not do let me talk to this side over here. It's because you did not do what the king said. He told you to stay and you went. Just look at your Bible. He told you this is not the person for you. But you said, I've already set the wedding date. Just, just look at your Bible. Just look at your Bible. And I think I can change them. And you didn't do what the king said. If you just do what the king said. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? John 14 and 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Actions demonstrate love, not just words. Come here. Come here. Come here. Actions demonstrate love, not just words. The devil mad. He knew I had a word today, so he made the air go out, but that's all right. I don't care. Yeah, this is an old school saying. That's why we came back with the old school songs, because listen, we're going we gonna to worship God like we outside. Come here. I'd rather, come here. I'm going to come down here to you. I'd rather you show me you love me than tell me all the time, but don't show me anything. <laughs> love is an action word. If you say you love me, show me you love me. I, I, come, I come from a family of 13 kids. Yeah, I, I know we don't get down like that no more. Th 13 kids. Uh, ten, 10 boys, three girls. Here it is. Ten boys, three girls. And, and because my, my father died when we were young, mama had to raise those boys by herself. So I didn't get a whole lot of, oh, little boo 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 I didn't get a whole lot of, what they say to you at school today, boo No, 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 no. Because mama was raising boys. So mama had a different way of showing us that she loved us. She would, she, would, she would work, and she would hear you say you wanted something, and you'd come in your room, and it'd be on the bed. She knew I liked banana pudding, so if I did good at school, she said, boy, it's a banana pudding in the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. What I'm trying to get you to see is God demonstrates his love towards you every morning when you get up. When you wake up and you close in your right mind, you can breathe his air. You can step out on your feet. God is showing you he loves you. Watch this. Watch this. Somebody say, I know God loves me. 
Well, give him a hand clap of praise like you know he loves you. Watch this. Here it is. That was number two. Number three, I'm almost where I'm going. The third step to kingdom living, here it is, is never forget who is king. That means stay humble. It matters not how much money you make, how much education you get. Stay humble. It's easy to stay humble when you understand that everything belongs to the king. I taught you this when I taught you about a kingdom. In a kingdom, everything belongs to the king. You don't own nothing. He just lets you keep it. This principle is the same principle that's happening in Israel right now. Nobody in Israel owns land, right? So, in, in, in Israel, the people that have land, they can leave it or bequeath it to their children, but they can't sell it because they don't own it. That's a kingdom principle. Whatever you have, when you leave here, I guarantee you, you can't take it with you. You own nothing, so you should stay humble, understanding that everything you have came from God. Don't get so blessed that you can no longer be bothered. See, that's some, that's some folk God done blessed them so much they ain't got time for God on Sunday. They ain't got time to come to church and lift up their hand to God. God has been too good. When God lets you on the bus, don't take his seat. You have to stay humble and remember who's king. Somebody say amen. amen. This is why God said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I don't care who you are. I don't care what color, what creed, everything that has breath should praise the Lord. Here it is. This is the final point. Right, right here. Here it is. Right here. I need you to write this one down. The fourth step to kingdom living. Here it is. Is you must let go of traditions. Your way of doing things. Your customs, your practices, your ritual. I wouldn't raise like that. that, that that's how that I, I've always been this way. I ain't going to, I'm wired different, Pastor. I'm, I'm always just going to be, that's just who I am. I just don't, I don't take, I don't do get backs. I don't do, I don't forgive people. I'm not going to let people just talk to me. No, any kind of, any kind of, any kind of. Come on, come here, come here. I know I'm talking to you. Yeah. I'm trying to help you. Come here. Give me five more minutes. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you experience kingdom living. You can't experience kingdom living, walk around talking about, ain't nobody going to talk to me. No, any, no you got to let that stuff go. It's the traditions. I believe, I believe that the main thing that is keeping people from coming to the house of God are the traditions of men. You can't come to church unless you got a suit. You can't come to church unless you got, here it is, church shoes. Come here. Yeah, you. You can't come. You can only have communion on first Sunday. He said, do this often in remembrance of me. You can have communion every day if you want to. We, 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 we can't have communion, Pastor, but on first Sunday. And then can't nobody pass it out but the deacons. Oh, oh, and because the deacon is the only one got clean hands? That, that's... See, those are the traditions of men, and those traditions, come here, are keeping people out of church. But oh, I believe, I believe, well, watch this, that we're living in a time that God is getting ready to use the unlikely people. See, this is, this is the point that I wanted you to get. We're living in a dispensation of time where God is going to use folk that don't look like they ought to be used by God. God is going to do like he did in the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit fell on people from all nations. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? The educated people, 
the uneducated people, the circumcised people, the uncircumcised people. God is looking for somebody with a willing heart. So if you can only receive from pastor because he got a doctorate degree in theology, you might miss your blessing. God is going to use anybody that has an open heart to say, God, use me. And they may not have a degree in theology. They may not have a position in the church, but they've given God a position in their heart. And they say, God, send me how I'll go. Use me to spread your gospel. God said, I'm going to use the unlikely folk just to prove to you that my love reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. I need about 23 folk to shout, use me, Lord. Now give God a hand clap of praise right there. Watch this. Watch this. I'm almost where I'm going. Here it is. Oftentimes, here it is deep. What messes us up and hinders us from experiencing kingdom living is we live a life that is off balance and we don't like process. Don't you run out the back door on me right now. What's messing us up from living a life of kingdom living it's because we live a life that's off balance and we don't like process. And any area of your life, come here, that is consistently off balance is going to eventually cause you pain. Did you hear what I said? If you keep hopping around on your hip, before you know it, your back gonna be hurting. Because the pain always end up in another place. Well, I'm trying to get you to see. If your, if, listen, if your finances are off balance, it's going to cause you pain. If your marriage is off balance, it's going to eventually cause you pain. You don't have to be under attack to have pain. You just have to be off balance. And some of you, you're in pain, and it's not because, the, listen, the devil ain't attacking you. You off balance. And that's what's causing the pain. And so, to get you back on balance, God wants to send you through process. He's so dedicated and he's so dogmatic and so determined about you experiencing kingdom living because he loves you so much that he sends you through process. But the problem is, here it is, Zena. We only have time for God. We give God 30 to 45 minutes on Sunday to say what he got to say and do what he got to do because we got stuff to do. We got places to go. Uh-oh, uh so it got quiet now. We give God 35 minutes for the process. But true kingdom living takes time. And God has to send you through process. God has to send you through a process so you can learn to stop letting people use you. God has to send you through process so that you can stop wearing your feelings on the outside. God has to send you through process so you can stop coming in here with a fake smile. God has to send you through process so that you can learn how to be by yourself. Come here. Come here. Come here. You, you ain't just got to have nobody. God has to send you through process so you can learn how to be by yourself because you keep inviting people into your life while you're going through process and then you get mad when they leave. They left because you're going through process and you ain't supposed to have nobody around you when you're going through process. And so here it is. Watch this, I'm done, I'm done. It's hot in here, I gotta go, watch this. <laughs> Somebody shout process. process. If you let God take you through process, I said all of that as my opening to get to five words. God gave me five words to give you 
But I had to go through all of that to get to these five words. Here it is. It's right here in the text. Isaiah 65, verse 24. These are your five words. It shall come to pass. That's, that, that's, that, that's it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it shall come to pass. I need you to say it with me. It shall come I don't know what it is you're believing God for. I don't know what it is you're waiting on. But the word of the Lord for you is, it Come here. Come here. Even if they say no, it still don't mean it's not going to happen. It might not happen through them. But the word of the Lord for you is, it Stop worrying about stuff that God that already told you he's going to take care of. It Stop crying about stuff that God that already told you he's going to fix. It Now give God a hand clap of praise like you believe it. Come here. I'm done. Here it is. Watch this. Here it is, Ray. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead and get your keys. Go, go get your purse. I'm done. Here it is. That's all God told me to tell you. I don't know what you've been waiting on. I don't know what you've been praying about. I don't know what kept you up last night. I don't know what it is you've been talking to God about in your closet. I don't know what it is you've been believing God for. But the word of the Lord for you is it. Come here. Come here. I'm done. Yeah, walk, walk, I'm, I'm done because I hear, the, I hear the Holy Spirit speaking to me right here. Because if you've been asking, thank you, Holy Spirit. If you've been asking God for it and it hadn't happened yet, it's because you have the power to fix it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. If you've been praying about something, yeah, and it hadn't happened yet, yeah, it's because you have the ability to fix it. God is not going to fix what you can fix yourself. Yeah. If there is something that has not been fixed and you're crying about it and you're saying, God, take care of this, he ain't going to do it if it's something you can fix yourself. I don't know about you, but I ain't staying up all night crying over something I can fix myself. You don't want to be with me? We can fix that. Yeah, so y'all don't have. Okay, y'all. Let me talk to this side over here. Here, no. Take it. Let me let me talk to this side over here. Yeah, I feel some realness over here. If. If being in my presence irks you that much, we can fix that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we can fix that. If you in debt, come here. I'm done. I'm done. If, we, if you in debt and you've been praying, God, please get me out of debt. God is not moving because you can fix that. If you are in debt and you've been praying, asking God to help you get out of debt, God says, I'm not going to do for you what you got control to do for yourself. You need to sit down with your spouse. You got to hold hands, look in one another's eye and say, baby, we can fix this. If you got to cut up some credit cards, cut them up. If you got to stop eating out, stop eating out. God ain't going to fix what you can fix yourself. God, everybody standing, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Go ahead and stand, go ahead and stand. God only fix those things that we can't fix. Did you hear what I said? I love you too much to lie to you. You will never experience kingdom living 
if you're waiting on God to fix something that you can fix. I know that's a bitter pill, but I got to tell you the truth. You can fix that problem in your house. Do right. Do what you're supposed to do. If you got health problems, you want to, you, you, you know, you, you're saying, I, I got to get my health under control. I need to lose weight. You can say, we can fix that. I got to start eating right, right. I have to walk. I have to exercise. I have to deny my flesh. I can't be eating little debris and going to bed. I can't do that. We can fix that. Come on, somebody. You say you tired? I'm tired. Pastor, I'm just tired. I'm, I'm tired all the time. I'm just tired. I'm drained. I'm tired. We can fix that. You ain't even got to pray about that. We can fix that. Turn your phone off. Tell people you can't do it. Tell them you ain't going to be able to make it. We can fix that. And so here it is. The final word is this. Kingdom living, to experience kingdom living, is in your hands. To experience kingdom living is in your hands. There's something you can do about it. Now, if you want to keep going around this same mountain until you get older, now your kids are getting older. Your kids see you're going through the same mountain. Your grandbabies now see you're going through the same mountain. When you can fix this, It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a choice. It's a decision that you must make. Because everything that God promised you that he was going to do, I'm, listen, I'm a living witness. It shall come to pass. You do your part. Do what you're supposed to do. I'm a living witness. God will take care of the rest. It shall come to pass. But you have to do your part first. And all that's in agreement said, amen. amen. Give God a hand clap of praise right there. Listen, I'm done. We're out of time. But the first step is this. If you're standing in here today and you're not saved, you have not given your life to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, Robert, what I love, man, I'm so glad that God broke me before he placed me. I'm so glad, brother, that he broke me before he placed me. So I ain't got to stand before you trying to act bougie. I don't have to stand before you trying to act all such and much. No, because I've been broken. I love people that's been broken. I love people that's struggling with alcohol and struggling with weed and struggling with pills and struggling with all of this stuff. I love those kind of people because when they come, they come right. So if you're standing in this place today, if you listen to me, I'm talking to you, sir. I know you out in the vestibule. I'm talking to you too, ma'am. If God is calling on you and God is pulling your heart, say, I sent you to this church because that's where I want you to be. I have planted you there because I have put in his mouth the words to water the seed that I put inside of you so that you can become what I've called you to be. If you're in this place and if you're not saved, I'm going to make two calls. If you're not saved, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm not talking about what mama did, what grandmother did. I'm talking about you, man. If you have not said, I want you to come into my heart, change my life, Walk with me for the remaining balance of my life. He made it so simple. That's all you got to do is to accept him. Man, you can't do that by yourself. Sister, you can't stop that by yourself. But he will do it for you. It shall come to pass, but you got to let him lead. So if you're standing here today, and if that's you, I'm not even going to ask you to come up front. I'm just going to ask you to repeat this prayer with me right where you are. I want you to say, Father, thank you for taking care of me all of my life. I know I should have died a long time ago. But God, and today, I thank you for sparing my life.
today, I want you to come into my heart. You said in your word, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that he rose from the dead, that I would be saved. Today, in this place, that's my confession and that's my belief. And Father, if I ever miss it, if I ever fall short, you're faithful and just to forgive me, to restore me, and to renew me. Thank you today for my new life, for my new start, and for my new heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise right there. One last appeal. One last appeal. If you've been looking for a church home, you've been looking for a church where you can come in and you can get the word, a church where you can come and keep it real, where you can use your gifts, where you can come and get a word in season from God. Listen, I would love to be your pastor. We would love to be your church. I want you to meet me right here at this altar. I want you to come down. I want you to bring your family. There you are, brother. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I want you to come. I want you to come be a part. Come on. There you go, my daughter. Come on. Come on, come on, I'm waiting. God sent me here for you. There you go. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. God sent me here for you. He sent me here for you. Come on, come on. There you go. Somebody ought to be excited. They're coming, they're coming. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Listen. Come on, come on. I'll wait on you. I'll wait on you. I'll wait on you. Listen, I want you to ask your neighbor. There you go, daughter. Come on. Come on up here. Come on up here. I want you to look at the person beside you and say, hey, are you good? You good? You good? Yes. Yeah. Look at him and say, I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. Come on, let's give God another hand clap of praise yes, right there. God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Even for those that are online, we thank you for joining and for connecting with us. I want you to stretch your hand toward our brothers and sisters that have come down to this altar right now. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for your sons and your daughters that you've sent to this place. I thank you, Lord God, that you sent them here for a season such as this. I thank you for speaking to their hearts and speaking to their minds. I thank you, Lord God, that you ordered their steps to this place. Lord God, because you have an assignment down on the inside of them. And Father, I thank you that the seed that you placed inside of them is going to take root and it's going to bring forth a harvest. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold because of what you're going to do in their life. God, I thank you that all the things that they've gone through in their life have led them to this moment. Thank you that there are no wasted tears. You're going to use them in a time such as this. And so, Father, we thank you for their walk. We thank you for their assignment. And we thank you for their carriage. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give God another hand clap of praise right there. Listen, I want you to follow our ministers as we get some information from you. And thank you. God bless you so much. Follow our ministers. We'll get some information from you. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for all of those that have come. Lift your hands one last time. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord our God keep you. May the Lord our God establish you. May the Lord our God cause his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord our God give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Go and have the best Sunday evening you had all year. God bless you. God bless you. We love you.